One Zambia, one nation. Good evening and welcome to the main news at 18 hours on ZMBC TV2 with me, Mutukwa Moya. Here are the headlines. Business in the central business district CBD of Kitwe this morning came to a standstill as hundreds of residents lined the streets and cheered police officers as they ferried 19 suspected Tokota Boys gang members to the Kitwe Magistrate Court. Still coming up, the Lusaka Magistrate Court has sentenced son to former President Frederick Chiloba to eight months imprisonment for theft. And under-20 national football team coach Charles Wale says England-based striker Muya Malumo has settled quickly in the team as compared to his colleague Lefumpa Mwandwe. Thank you so much for joining us on other news in detail. Business in the central business district of Kitwe this morning came to a standstill as hundreds of residents lined the streets and cheered the police officers as they ferried 19 suspected Tokota Boys gang members to the Kitwe Magistrates Court. As a convoy of six vehicles carrying heavily armed police officers made its way from Kitwe Central Police Station to the Magistrates Court, hundreds of traders Passersby and bus drivers abandoned their businesses and danced, sang songs, and cheered police officers for arresting the gang members. Paul Sharala has more in the following report. <laughs> Their day started with boarding the police van, popularly known as Kasalanga. These are suspected members of the notorious Tokota Boys gang being ferried from various police stations to the Kito Magistrate Court to face the law. Heavily armed police officers in four different vehicles gave security to the 19 suspects. The convoy meandered through the central business district of Kitwe, where hundreds of residents abandoned their businesses to line up the streets and cheer the police officers. The whole route was full of people who danced, chanted slogans and sang songs, praising police officers for arresting the Tokota boys. Security at the Kitwe Magistrate Court was tight as dozens of police officers were deployed. The suspects were later ushered into court as they appeared before Chief Resident Magistrate Yvonne Naromba. Magistrate Naromba then told the suspects that they are jointly charged with three offences. In count one, the 19 are charged with intention to cause grievous bodily harm. In count two, they are charged with wounding or poisoning, while in count three, they are charged with kidnapping and abduction. The three charges arise from a video which went viral on social media in which the Tokota boys assaulted a 16-year-old teenager of Moenga compound who they later forced to eat his own fecal matter. Chief President Magistrate Nalomba later told the suspects that the three charges they are facing can only be tried in the High Court. She later adjourned the matter to 28th May for mention as the state awaits instructions from the Director of Public Prosecution to commit the 19 suspects to the High Court. During the court proceedings, hundreds of Kito residents followed the case from outside as the area was cordoned off by police officers. As the vehicle carrying the 19 members of the Tokota Boys was leaving the Kito Magistrate Court, hundreds of Kito residents burst into celebrations. <laughs> the boys have been remanded in custody. Poshalala, ZMBC News in Kitwe. Meanwhile, police in Kitwe have arrested four of the nine suspected members of the 100 gang who allegedly beat up a 27-year-old Richard Chitembo at Mulenga bus stop in Kitwe on 12th May 2018. Copyboat Police Commissioner Charity Katanga says that the four suspects are allegedly the ones who beat up Mr. Chitembo in a video which went viral where he was forced to denounce the Tokota Boys Gang. Mrs. Katanga says the four are Elijah Sikazwe of Mulenga compound, Martin Mwale and Martin Kafla of No Fixed Board and Fred Chupaila of Ndeke Village. The police chief says five other suspected members of the 100th gang are on the run and police are pursuing them. Mrs. Katanga says the four suspects are remanded in police custody and will appear in court soon. Now, the Lusaka Magistrate Court has sentenced son to former President Frederick Chiloba to eight months imprisonment for theft. 
In this case, the late president's son, Frederick Chiloba Jr., is alleged to have stolen a phone and traded it with drugs in Lusaka's Chibulia Township. In passing a judgment, Magistrate Ntando Se Chabala said the prosecution proved their case beyond reasonable doubt to prove the allegations that had been slapped on the convict. After being found guilty of the offense, Frederick Chiloba Jr., in his mitigation through his lawyer, asked for a lesser sentence as he was of youthful age and a first offender. The 33-year-old and former Zambia Air Force ZAF officer stole a Samsung S7 age valued at 8,500 kwacha, a property of Brenda Chisha. Meanwhile, a Lusaka Apex Medical University student has been brought to court on in charge of criminal trespass. Malanda Zulu, age 24, on April 12, 2018, entered the premises of State House with intent to commit a felony. Mr. Zulu was found around 0240 hours by police officers who later took him to Woodlands Police Station. He is expected to take plea before Magistrate Sunge Chanda. And in rather strange but real story, a 12-year-old grade 8 pupil in Lusaka has narrated to TV2 News how a group of girls and boys from Kablonga Girls and Boys Secondary Schools have been bullying her and threatening violence. It is alleged that the girl, who is a member of a teenage social media group, has been spreading information of the illicit activities going on amongst the group members. Here is a report. The look on her face was that of fear as she narrated to me the events leading to the bullying and later threatening of violence. According to the revelations from this social media group on Messenger, the girls and boys sent nude pictures to one another. Based on one physical appearance, the leaders of the group will then decide whether one is beautiful enough to be part of the physical gathering. I was accused of spreading a rumor that the games they play include corrupt things which I didn't actually say. What kind of games do they play? Um, seven Minutes in Heaven, Kiss Commando Dare, uh, and Spin the Bottle. What is seven? What is it again? Seven Minutes in Heaven. heaven? It's, a, it's a game whereby they leave two people alone while the others go, whether, unless the others go away, they tell them to do whatever they want. They go there and start kissing each other. They start. This 12 year old grade 8 Pew Pew is alleged to belong to a group of teenage boys and girls from Kablonga Girls and Kablonga Boys, as well as Twin Palm Secondary Schools. They meet at a common venue to sexually entertain one another and one of the acts is called seven minutes in heaven uh, they are telling me if you tell the if you tell the deputy head the head the head teacher or anyone will will beat you if you tell them again who beat you they threaten me about four times the girl's guardian is worried over the happenings at the schools too but in the process of looking for her we found out a lot of glaring issues that are going on in these schools on social media and also for me as a parent it scares me because at the end of it all we'll see kids killing each other killing themselves because of what's really really happening to them the matter has been reported to authorities at kablonga girls where management says it will carry out its own investigations the matter has since been reported to police. Before Lankawani, TV2 News in Lusaka. We take our first break and after that, the free ENT surgeries under the Indian Rotary Club have started at the University Teaching Hospital UTH. I'll be right back with more stories. Keep watching. Welcome back. It is a dream of many young people to be someone in life when they grow up. But for a 12-year-old girl of Lusaka's Chawama compound, she is struggling to ensure food is put on the table as she has now become a breadwinner. Abigail Kando, who is in grade 5, is now spending most of her time at the market where she is selling fritters just to make sure she feeds her grandmother who is keeping her. Take a look in this report.
She is 12 years old and already a breadwinner. This is Abigail Kantu, a grade 5 pupil at Taya Community School in Lusaka's Chawama compound. She is an orphan and her father is said to be in Wapula province and has only seen her once. Because of challenges, she now sells at the market after school to feed her grandmother. Her day starts with school where she is doing a grade 5 at Taya Community School. School authorities picked her and was given space for free. Uh, we picked um, Abigail from uh, the community uh, because we were with our children who were unable to go to school because of uh, financial challenges. So we brought her in here to see how best we can help her uh, because we looked at her status and uh, the difficulties that she's facing. After school, Abigail sells sweet potatoes and fritters so that she can put food on the table for her and the grandmother. Her dream is to work for the bank one day. Teacher is confident she will realize her dream. Her grandmother now wants all wishes to come and help. <laughs> Abigail is determined to finish school and she has refused the idea of selling at the market to come in between her dreams. Katushi Wadia, TV2 News in Osaka. To health matters now, free ear, nose and throat ENT surgeries under the Indian Rotary Club have started at the University Teaching Hospital, UTH. UTH Public Relations Officer Natalie Mashikolo says yesterday five people were discharged post-surgery while 14 are still waiting for their surgeries. Ms. Mashikolo says the doctors are doing everything possible to ensure they attend to as many people as possible. Here's a report. Of people seeking free medical services for ear, nose and throat problems is observably still high. The Indian Rotary Club sent medical staff to Zambia last week to attend to these people. The free clinic was conducted last week to determine how many people would need hearing aids, medicines and surgery. The clinic was supposed to have stopped yesterday but has continued to run alongside the surgeries due to large numbers of people that need to be attended to. University Teaching Hospital Public Relations Officer Natalie Mashikolo has given an update on how many surgeries have been conducted so far. You may well be aware that uh, after screening, the doctors actually booked patients uh, for theatre and so yesterday we had three cases done and they've since been discharged and it's, of course it's ear, nose and throat. So it's not just a throat or the ear, so it's both ear, nose and throat. Then today we have 14 cases that have been booked and as we speak the doctors are still in theatre and after seeing them, uh, other patients will still be admitted and be operated on. A bedsider who is waiting on her husband for his surgery is happy that they have been assisted. <laughs> Efforts to speak to the doctors were hampered as they were busy in theatre conducting more ENT surgeries. Elizabeth Nyambi, TV2 News in Lusaka. We take our second break and still to come, VIP mourns the late Lusaka Mayor Wilson Kalumba. This plus other stories, keep watching TV2. We continue with TV2 News. Vice President Inage Wina has described the late Lusaka Mayor Wilson Kalumba as a man of few words but a silent banner full of ideas that he shared with his friends. Mrs. Wina says government and the council will miss Mr. Kalumba for the brilliant ideas he brought to fore aimed at transforming the city of Lusaka into an attractive center for investment. She says the patriotic front leadership in Lusaka will fill the void in their midst following the demise of Mr. Kalumba. Mrs. Wina was speaking when she visited the funeral house in Lusaka's North Mid area, where she also signed a book of condolences, which has, which has since been opened. Here's a report. He was known to be a man of many ideas, which could have changed the face of Lusaka city. For an effective and efficient waste management, Lusaka Mayor Wilson Kalumba 54 proposed the payment of garbage fees through mobile phones. He also wanted all public places to have Wi-Fi internet for improved information communication technology in the city. 
He further called for the setting up of a radio station at the council to act as a medium of communication between the local authority and the residents. However, on Tuesday morning, the mayor answered the Lord's call. Government and various leaders have continued visiting the funeral house in Lusaka's North Mid area. And Vice President Inonge Wina has signed a book of condolences describing Mr. Kalumba as a man of few words but a silent banner for ideas. It should be to see the outcome and local government minister Vincent Mwale says government is waiting for the arrival of other family members before the burial program is announced. I come today to meet the family members and those of us in the local government fraternity. We are so encouraged. And we are so thankful. Meanwhile, mayors and former mayors from other cities have paid tribute to the late Mr. Kalumba. He had a passion for the country. He had a passion for Lusaka. Uh, Mayor Kalumba is a person that was unique in his own way. He's a person that spoke his mind out. As you know, the mayor was uh, more ceremonial. But in this one, at least just in terms of uh, uh, creating a more sustainable system for the council. Family representative Moses Funga has held government for the support it has continued to render to the bereaved family. The way government has come in and council itself in particular, it is comforting us as a family. Nonetheless, councillors have also continued paying tribute to the late Mr. Kalumba. We have lost an instrumental man who was social, intelligent, uniter. It's uh, really sad that we lost such a man, a depositor of wisdom. Mr. Karumba died on Tuesday morning at the University Teaching Hospital UTH after an illness. He is survived by six children, two boys and four girls. Lucky Piri, TV2 News, Lusaka. So to come is Sports News. Keep watching TV2. Finally in Sports News. Under-20 national football team coach Charles Wale says England-based striker Mwia Malumo has settled quickly in the team as compared to his colleague Lefumpa Mwandwe. Wale says Malumo of Wigan Athletic Youth side is adapting well with the rest of the team, adding that left winger Mwandwe of Shrewsbury Town still needs more time to settle in the team. He added that with time, the two England-based new collapse will get Get used to the Zambian conditions and the team. Meanwhile, Wale says they will not underrate Rwanda in the return leg of the 2019 Niger Junior Africa Cup qualifier at Nkoloma Stadium this Saturday, despite a two goals advantage from the first leg. Here is a report. football team and despite the two goals lead from the first leg in Rwanda the technical bench is not taking chances ahead of the return match at Nkoloma Stadium this Saturday. Under 20 coach Charles Wale feels the return match of the 2019 Niger Junior Africa Cup Championship qualifier will be a different ball game hence the need not to underrate Rwanda. And we cannot uh, underrate the Rwanda is a strong team and uh, thank God we, we, we got uh, two goals we scored. So even here, I think we have pushed our boys to work extra hard. And Meanwhile, Wale says England-based striker Muya Malumo has settled quickly in the team as compared to his colleague Lifumpa Mwanwe. Look at the, the two, the other guy is, is having a challenge of adaptation. But with the Malumo, I think he's uh, quick to, 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 to settle. And we are very much uh, and impressed with uh, both of them. And England-based striker Muya Malumo, who was introduced towards the end of the second half in the first leg away in Rwanda, says he's hoping to be given more game time on Saturday. The first few days were hard getting to know the boys, getting to settle in, uh, but now it's getting, going well, learning their language a bit, so getting get to know the boys, how they play on the pitch and off the pitch. So. A good team as a team and I think, think I've fitted in quite quick and well with the boys.
Meanwhile, scorer of the two goals in the first leg in Rwanda, Francisco Mwepu, is targeting to score more goals this Saturday. Yeah, we played well. Uh, the first leg to Rwanda, and as they are coming back to our land, our home, so uh, we are hoping for the best, and uh, we will score more goals than two than what we scored. Outside. The junior Chipolopolo's opponents, Rwanda, are expected in the country in the early hours of tomorrow, Thursday. Prince Chiuni, TV2 Sports News, in Lusaka. Here is a recap of our top stories as we end the bulletin. Business in the central business district of Kitwe this morning came to a standstill as hundreds of residents lined the streets and cheered police officers as they ferried 19 suspected Tokota Boys gang members to the Kitwe Magistrates Court. As a convoy of six vehicles carrying heavily armed police officers made its way from Kitwe Central Police Station to the Magistrates Court, hundreds of traders, passers-by and bus drivers abandoned their businesses and danced sang songs and cheered police officers for arresting the gang members. The Lusaka Magistrate Court has sentenced son to former President Frederick Chiluba to eight months imprisonment for theft. In this case, the late President's son, Frederick Chiluba Jr., is alleged to have stolen a phone and traded it with drugs in Lusaka's Chibwale Township. And under-20 national football team coach Charles Wale says England-based striker Mwia Malumo has settled quickly in the team as compared to his colleague Lifumpa Mwandwe. Wale says Malumo of Wigan Athletic Youth side is adapting well with the rest of the team, adding that left winger Mwandwe over Shrewsbury Town still needs more time to settle in the team. You can still join us for another detailed bulletin at 20 hours right here on TV2, the powers of television. From now up to 20 hours, this is Mutu Kumoyam. Good evening and see you then.